Welcome to the mystical world of Madame Rue. She has the gift of sight and can reveal your future and explain your past. Only she can lift the veil of mystery and connect to the regions beyond. If revelation is not what you seek, but instead a charm or potion, you've come to the right place. Is it love, fame, fortune, or perhaps release from a curse? Or maybe it was the sound of her tambourine and her melodious voice that drew you here. Be not afraid, step inside. Your destiny awaits. So when I was starting to design this project, I was looking at a lot of pictures of the inside of gypsy caravans. And they were very colorful, lots of jewel tones, lots of sparkle. So I decided to go with a, a brighter, more colorful palette instead of a more dark, spooky palette. And I also thought, if you were using this with the carnival that the color palette would go very well with it and uh, when my husband saw the finished product he's like you really love tents and I'm like yeah I do it's just when I think of gypsies I either think of caravans or I think of tents so um, I just thought the tent was a good setting for all the little goodies that uh, are inside. So I'm going to go ahead and walk through how I did all of this and um, hopefully you will enjoy and want to make your own gypsy tent. Now underneath the tent is a base and the reason I decided to add a base is that Alpha Stamp started carrying these really cool strings of lights that I thought would be neat uh, to put around the tent to light it up and I think these strings would be great for any of the carnival project uh, pieces or just strung in you know like wire trees I have a lot of wire trees that I use with my display and um, just to light it up so because of the lighting I needed something that I could hide all the cords uh, underneath and this base is a really nice size and I thought I could accommodate all the lights that, that are on the string. Plus, it's two inches deep. So that meant that the wiring could completely fit underneath. So what I started was first drawing some lines around the top of the base, you know, before assembling it, doing anything. And uh, th to give me a guide to add all the different holes for the different lights. And so you can see how I've how I've laid out the lights and how many I've put in each area. And then I was like, okay, you know, now I've got to, I've got to punch holes in this thing. And I, I did two different methods to see what would be the best. Then the first picture where you see the lines and the holes drawn, you look at the far right corner and you see a hole that's already punched. Now with that, I took one of the really heavy hole punches. Um, I forget who makes them. I, I don't know if they're called Cropodile or something like that but they're really heavy duty punches and they will punch through heavy chipboard. And so I just took the punch and just kind of punched holes until I had the circle punched out. It's a, you get a rough edge at the end, but at all around the edges, but I'm gonna cover that with something so that wasn't so important. Just being able to cut through uh, was, was a good, was really what I was after. And then, but it did take you know a while to do that with having to punch several holes. Then the next thing I did was I tried to, or I did, uh, drill holes. Now the drilling goes much faster. I had a drill bit that was half inch drill bit and it was the perfect size to drill the holes. But the thing is, since you're drilling into chipboard and chipboard is layered, it, it, it makes a hole but it kind of chews it up and so you've got a lot of rough stuff left. So I think both en en methods came out about the same. If you punch, you get a nice clean hole, at least in terms of not having to sand a lot. Um, but it takes longer to do several punches. If you drill, your hole's a lot messier, so then you gotta spend a lot of time sanding it. So I don't know, it was kind of a toss up either way. Um, and I think part of it probably, if you decide to do this, your choice might be what you're comfortable with if you don't have a drill or you're not comfortable using a drill, but you gotta punch and you just wanna sit there while you're watching TV, punching holes, you know, that works perfect. So I just wanted to let you know the difference. And then if you look down below, uh, below the first picture on the left, uh, you see that's the back of the base. So this comes as a kit and it's got the top piece, pieces for all around. And then that notched piece 
on the top is to accommodate some built-in stairs. So basically you just glue it together. It's, it's, it'll be pretty self-evident uh, how it goes together it's, there's, since there's so few pieces. But you, of course you've got the cord that needs to come out of the base. So I used a uh, box cutter to cut a notch in the bottom of the back piece of the base before I put it together that uh, would accommodate sticking the cord through that so it could, we could come out and you could plug it in. And then the last picture that you see on uh, the far right at the bottom is the whole thing put together. You've got the holes in it, you've got all the sides on, and you've got that indented stair step in place as well. Now you can see here how I inserted the lights. Now I did paper everything first and repoke my holes. Um, you know, you could paper it first and draw your holes on and then um, and then punch or drill your holes. I always get nervous about that because I'm like, what if I tear up the paper and I don't have I don't have enough paper? So I tend to just punch holes and stuff and then go back, add the paper, and then repunch. Of course, if you're painting, it doesn't matter. So um, I've got the thing flipped over here, and you can see how um, I've stuck the electrical stuff into the hole. Now, if you look at the top uh, right picture, you'll see the electrical stuff. You'll see that is a washer. So I just bought a bunch of washers at the hardware store and painted those. They were silver. And then you see the little bulb, the, the I think it's plastic. I don't think it's glass. Is off. Now, that thing just twists right off that uh, the electrical part so it's really simple to just take all your little plastic things off then stick the um, the electrical pieces right up to the edge of the hole and then screw that uh, plastic piece on and the plastic piece is so fat that the the um, it won't fall back down through the hole the uh, other thing I want to mention if you look at the first picture on the left I want you to look down to the bottom of the picture and you see where the plug is. You know, you've got this thing is set up so that you could have more than one in a string. So one end has got a plug to go in the socket and the other end, you know, has the female where you can put another plug in. If you look, pay attention to how I ran the cord. And the reason I ran it that way is that the first two holes in the front are too wide for um, two of the bulbs to stretch to. So the distance between each bulb was not wide enough to go across that area. So it would have been a little cleaner to be able to take the center of the cord and start down there by the stair step, but the cord just wasn't wide enough. So I ended up starting on one end there, um, on one side and going all the way around and ending up at the bottom on the other side and then stretching the cord through the whole base and out the back. So that's why I did it that way. If you look at anything, well, there's an easier way to string that. Now you could put your your holes a little differently and then you might not have that problem but that was the only those were the only two holes where the cord the the cord between two lights just wasn't long enough wide enough to to uh for both to fit through the hole so I'll, I'll mention that to you and then if you look at uh, the picture on the bottom in the right now you can see the whole thing's put together you got the lights in there you got your you got your um your uh uh, washers painted around them and then I've added some rugs uh, now there are two two collage things to go with this project new things that I have one is a collage sheet that has a lot of little bits and pieces and the other is a digital kit that has not only all the images that are on the collage sheet but the big images that I use to make the tent and some of the bigger items that you know they just don't make sense to put on a collage sheet because they fill the whole sheet so uh, two of the items on the big digital kit is are the two rugs that you see there and I thought it was kind of cool to have a rug that kind of led you up the staircase and then I have a nice round one for the center now I want to talk about assembling the tent you, know, you wouldn't have to do a tent um, you could you know use something else or just you may just want to make a few of the pieces that are inside the tent but if you if you want to make a structure like I did uh, this is how you would go about it now that digital kit does have these uh, panels these striped panels so if you want um, if you want to use the color scheme that I did or you know the exact uh, paper that I did those are in are in the digital kit and those strips of paper are, me are measure three inches by 10 inches. So three inches wide by 10 inches long. Now the 10 inches height uh, came about because of how high I needed the tent to be to accommodate the pieces I was putting in it 
uh, you know, the, the big hutch that's in there. And then I also have this beaded uh, lighting thing hanging down in there. And so that was just kind of, hey, how, how tall does it have to be when it's all together and you got the top on? So you can see everything. And so that's where I came up with the 10 inches. Of course, yours doesn't have to be that tall. It's up to you. So um, you'd want to print out the uh, as many uh, panels as you need. Now, in the pictures here in the example, I first started out with six panels. But once I started putting the thing together, it just there weren't enough panels. It, it didn't go as far around as I wanted. It didn't close as much as I wanted. So I ended up actually doing eight panels instead of six. So you want to print those panels out and then, um, or cut panels of your own out of other paper. And then you want to cut some chipboard pieces. Now this is lightweight chipboard, not the heavy stuff. And you're going to cut it slightly wider. So it's going to be three and a half inches by 10 inches. And that's so that we can create a tab. So then you'll glue the paper to, um, to the pieces of chipboard. And then you're going to score. Uh, that extra tab area so that it bends. Now, this is not like regular scoring, like you score with a scoring tool. Because it's chipboard, um, you're going to have to cut it a little bit. So this might be something you've never done before, but if you haven't, you basically need like a metal ruler, something that an X-Acto knife won't cut into, and you're going to lay that ruler right along the edge of the paper and the chipboard. And then you're very lightly going to run the uh, X-Acto knife along along the ruler to create just a little bit of a cut in the chipboard. If you haven't done this before, I just suggest playing with it a little bit before because what you want is you want enough of a cut that it makes it easy to, to uh, bend the chipboard but not so much as it completely cuts through the chipboard or that there's so little chipboard left that it easily falls apart. So once you've done that, then you'll start using that tab to, to glue together all the pieces of a panels and if you look at the top the top uh, right uh, picture you can see the inside uh, where the where the uh, striped papers on the outside and then you're looking at the chipboard and you can just see how all the little tabs are all glued together now once you get all of your panels in my, my case eight instead of six then you're just going to cut off that extra tab because there's always going to be a tab left at the end and then if you look down below you can see the flip side where all of the panels are together and you've got all the stripes and then the final picture in the bottom corner, as you can see now, because you've got these, these panels, that gives you the ability to make a rounded tent or a more round tent. If you were just trying to work with just bending the chipboard, it, it's a little bit harder unless you've got something to keep it in place. But this way of doing it allows you to be able to create that rounded shape uh, pretty easily. And those, all those scoring and panels, that's what allows you to do it. Now the tent top, again this, the panel there that you see, the triangular piece, that is in the digital kit because it's, you know, obviously large with such a big tent. Um, so if you want to use that, you're going to need to print six of them. And then there are tabs, you can see they're like the mustard color on the uh, left side of that triangular panel. Those are the tabs, so you're going to just do a normal scoring because it's just paper. Uh, score along those, so the long one and then the shorter one. And then you'll want to do a light score along the bottom there where you see the uh, red line because that part's going to be folded and that's what's going to give you that folded bit on the tent. So if you look up at the top right corner, you can see what the finished look is. So um, it's just like with the panels, you're going to glue together all of your different, uh, your six panels, your six triangular panels bend everything after you score it, and then just start gluing them um, together in a circle. And in this case, you won't have an extra tab. The last one will close the circle. And so the six, the six panels give you a nice tall um, uh, top, and it fits really nicely with either the six panels I originally did or the, um, the eight panels. Didn't want to go more than eight panels because then it closes the front up too much, and then you don't get to see the goodies inside. Um, so then at the bottom right, you can kind of see how, how I've, uh, I've got four glued together and then there's two more to go. I didn't paper the inside. It just makes it thicker and you can't see the backside anyway. So um, I just left it the white paper. Now on the inside, I decided I wanted a curtain effect. And I first started by covering the inside with paper. Uh, and I covered it with 
I didn't cover each single panel before. You might think, oh, well, why don't you do the back side? Because that way I would have as little seams as possible. So I just, you know, use 12 by 12 sheets of paper and I use the first 12 by 12 sheet of paper in the very center and then, um, then uh, cut two apart for the ends. And that way I only ended up with two seams. Then um, the, this curtain that you see there, that's also in the digital version of the kit. And you have a teal curtain and a red curtain. I'm gonna start with the teal curtain first. These you'll have to print four of and you'll, you'll do a flip. You'll flip your, flip your curtain so that you get curtains that are both directions and then I overlap them. I did back them with chipboard, the thin stuff, to make it a little heavier. Uh, as always, if you don't have thin chipboard, for things like this, you can just use some heavy cardstock. For doing the panels, it, it, it may be a little harder with cardstock. You might not get stiff enough, but you know you can try it and see if it'll work. So I wanted them popped out a little bit. So there is a layer of um, foam core tape. So I attached the two together. I popped the one up a little bit on top of the other before I attached them to each other, overlapping. And then I put more, more foam core behind the entire curtain set and then glued that on to, or, or uh, stuck that on to the back. Now you can see I have set it on the, um, the, the whole uh, base of the, of the tent, the panels and all, onto the platform. And that's kind of, at that point, I, was when I decided, oh, I've, I've got to have eight instead of six. So here you already see the eight in place, but that's kind of what got me thinking, oh, I need to add more panels. So now I want to add the red curtains. So I did the same thing with the red curtains. There's, again, there's a red curtain panel in your digital kit and then uh, print, print two of them, and, but flip one of them, and then do the same thing in terms of putting them together. But here, I'm not putting this against the back. I'm having it stand out and have the cabinet behind it. And so I thought that looked really cool because it looked like you know you could go in behind the curtains. You know, Madame Rue could go to her cabinet of potions and books and crystal balls and things like that. And that was kind of set back behind the curtain. I, I kind of like that idea. So that is just attached. Just glue it back in there uh, with the um, with the with the chest or the uh, cabinet back there behind. So one of the first things I decided after I decided got to have a tent is I was like, I gotta have some kind of beaded light looking thing. I mean, it's gypsies, you gotta have beads and things like that. So this is what I did. If you look at the top right, I've got two pieces of filigree and you can see the order is the order of, of uh, how I put them together. So I've got a bigger piece of filigree, a medium sized piece of filigree, and then a smaller. And the smaller one is a bead cap, so it's concave. And um, I hung different color strings of beads. These are rosary beads, so they're already they're already beaded, you know, it's, it's already a beaded chain. So you don't have to, it's, it's kind of faster. You don't have to, you know, make your own. So I just snipped sections of it and using jump rings and with a filigree, you got all those nice holes. So I can just connected a whole bunch of strings of beads around each single one of those. And then um, used a jump ring and some chain to connect one to the other. And then I just kind of messed with it to see how uh, far apart I wanted them to be. So I wanted to have this cascade, but of course I didn't have unlimited uh, ceiling space or height. So I had to take that into consideration as well. And then um, I didn't want this to hang in the middle. You know, with the tent, you've got that center hole at the very top. You could always have something on top of the, the tent on the outside that held you know, a chandelier or the beaded light or whatever you wanted, but I didn't want this in the center because if it was in the center, it would block that cabinet that's in the back behind the curtains. So I wanted the, um, the beaded thing to hang off center. And so what I did is I painted a wooden skewer and cut it the width of the, um, of the walls. And, and the second picture there, you, you can see in the, in the very center here, you can see how it would look uh, with the uh, with the um, skewer sitting up there and the the beaded uh, light hanging down and the extra bit of chain you see there that's just because I just wanted to make sure I had enough chain so once I put it on there if I thought I needed it to be longer then I could just move the jump ring you better it to be too long than too short and so that's the only reason it's there it, it's no for serves no purpose at all. It's just I simply took the picture uh, with that excess still on there. And then if you look at the inside of the um, of the top, 
you can see one I've glued a bunch of tassels around the edge and then I glued that skewer inside the tent top and I used a ton of uh, E6000 I just globbed it on there so there's no way that thing's gonna fall out and you don't care what it looks like because nobody's gonna see it and now that light can be you can slide it back and forth on that wooden skewer and have it anywhere you would like to have it once I got the sides and the tent top done I looked at the edges on the front of the tent and I'm like eh, I need something to put there because they look kind of rough and then you can see a little bit of the foam core that's holding the curtains the teal curtains to the walls you can probably see that best in the center picture and I'm like I need to hide that but I can't put too much there or when you look at it you won't see all the lights on the side I don't want the panels I don't want to put anything there that's going to totally block those lights that that run down the sides of the tent so the first thing I did is I printed two more of those stripe panels and I glued them on each side of a thin piece of chipboard so that made them sturdy so both sides of the chipboard had the stripe panel and then I cut a diagonal line so if you see number one I just cut a line diagonally through the two and, and turned it into two pieces and that gave me the two uh, long triangles so I set them up there in front of the in front of the, the edges and it's just like well they they cover the lights they're too they're still too big so I went back in and cut another diagonal line cutting a little bit more um, off of the the triangles just to get them a little bit narrower and I actually made a couple of cuts you know I, I try to be conservative so I cut a little bit set them up there see how they look cut a little bit more set it up there to see how it looks so finally I got them small enough in the middle picture you can see the size they ended up being and then I attached them to the front panels and they actually they overlap the inside of the tent a little bit and then there's they're at a little bit of an angle going out and you know just look at what you've got so that you don't block too much on the inside and so that you're not blocking if you do it like I did if you if you you know if you're making this like I did so that you're not blocking the lighting um, that goes along the sides now that the basic structure is together I'll go through all the little goodies that I put inside and the first thing is the hutch that you see and on the right you see the completed hutch that's actually two different pieces put together and they're two different kits chipboard kits so easy peasy um, the first kit is the top which basically goes from the drawers up and number one you can see I've got the back pieces laid out and on the side the side pieces so those side pieces are going to fold up and then that's what you do first don't glue anything I'm just laying it out so that you see where those pieces are going to go number two is you're going to put together the center section which is the center shelf area um, glue those pieces together then the third uh, you're going to glue that, that center section into the middle of the hutch and then if you look below that center section you're going to see a couple of shelves or a couple of uh, additional pieces now those are the pieces that are going to frame in the uh, the drawer so you want to glue those pieces in first before you glue the um, other pieces together now continuing now what you see is that those side pieces and the bottom piece I have uh, pulled those up and glued those to the side and then in number one you can see a front view and then you can see the side view and then in number two you can see there's a couple of more pieces for the top then there are three pieces now those uh, glue in those uh, shelf looking areas that are really drawers and those are going to create the dividers uh, that support one drawer in the top part and two drawers in the bottom and picture number three you can see I've glued the top pieces on now and I've glued those dividers in place in number three now in the first picture there the far right you can see that there's another piece that pretty piece that that makes it so cool looking with the arch that just lays on top um, but you're going to want to paint or do whatever you want to do first before you attach that because it's kind of a booger to get in there after the fact and then below that you see there's a set of three uh, 
chipboard drawers and you can see the, the, the lines are the fold lines and it's just simple to fold that up and glue it together. And then those are the three drawers that slip into the three bigger slots. The second piece, the bottom piece, is a library table and the first uh, number one you see that gives you the back, the bottom, the top, and the sides. And then just like with the hutch, you want to, the interior support piece, uh, divider piece, you want to put that together first. That's number two. Number three, you want to put that, glue that in place. And then number four is, once that's in place, now you can glue it, you know, raise up the sides, the back, the, the top and bottom, and glue those in place. And then now you've got your complete, your complete bottom part of the hutch. Now in the hutch, I have a variety of bottles. And there are several bottles that I dyed with alcohol ink. Very easy and simple to do. I have a couple of different clear bottles that you see in the first picture. I've got just a little bottle cap. Um, I used a variety of colors. And then I have the alcohol blending solution that's made to go with these, the ink. In the first picture, numbered one, I've just uh, squirted some of the alcohol ink in there and then number two I've added alcohol blending solution. If you've never worked with alcohol inks the more blending solution you add the lighter the color. So it's kind of up to you if you want it really dark you just use the ink and then if you want it lighter then just add some more alcohol uh, blending solution in place. Number three you can see I've just dropped the bottle into this little bath of, uh, of ink and I try to use as little as possible so that you don't waste it and alcohol ink likes to climb, you know, it, 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 if you, even if you didn't uh, turn the bottle around or do anything or slosh your, your cap around, it would still start to climb up the plastic of the bottle. So once you get it coated, I just let it sit there for a little bit and just kind of swirl it around. And then I use a piece, uh, some, some little uh, tweezer things, that, little grips, to pick up the bottle at the neck. And then um, you'll, have, you'll have ink that drains off of it. And you can actually uh, flip your bottle up and down while you're holding it, just making the ink go up and down. Um, and then just let it dry. Now, I, I didn't worry about picking it up with the, with the pincher things there uh, at the top, the alligator clip, I think that's what it's called. Because I'm going to paint that little top gold so that, you know, it looks like it's a cap. And just dye as many bottles as you want. And this is the same way I dye. I dye... Um, feathers, I dye fabric, I dye uh, ribbon, fibers, anything you want to dye. Just create a little bitty bath, put your ink in there, put some blending solution, you know, as little as you can to get what you want done and dye it and let it dry. Now once I assembled the hutch, I first painted it and I did not put that little fancy piece on until I was done painting. So I decided to go, you know, the jewel tones again and I, I went with this kind of uh, pinkish red and then also teal. And so quite a bit of it is painted with the exception of the fronts of the drawers and the back and sides of the cabinet, which I used a, a complimentary paper that went with the paint. And then of course that little fancy piece, I also painted that uh, with the pinker paint. So that's, I basically did that after I assembled it. And I did glue the top piece to the bottom piece before I started painting. Uh, and inside, if you look at the top, you see a variety of items. In the far top left, I'll start from there and work my way down, there's a set of books. These are a resin set of books. They're pre-made like that. They're all uh, attached together, and they fit really nicely in that corner. If you go to the center, it's a combination of things. In the very background, I've used chipboard bottles that I painted, so that kind of makes it look a little deeper without having so many bottles. And it, there's just, I just used this sheet um, that Alpha Stamps has that just has a whole bunch of different bottles. There's far more than what, what you see in here. And just painted them and then um, put a little bit of double stick tape behind them just to pop them up a little bit and then put them in the background. And then in front of that, you can see a couple of different bottles. Um, the one bottle, the first one you see with the little green, the bigger one, that looks sparkly just because there's a bunch of glitter in there. So I didn't actually color the outside, I just put glitter inside. The next to the red one, that's one of the ones that I dyed. The next one, the uh, orange, or not the orange, it's yellow looking, that's just a bead, it comes that way. And then the next one is painted with patina paints. And if you look to the far right, you see a picture of the product. Patina paints are great. 
they are made for metal, but they really work for all non-porous surfaces really nicely. So plastic, glass, as well as metal. And so the green bottle that you see has been painted with the patina paints. And then you keep going, you see um, a green bottle in there. That was uh, alcohol ink stained. The silver one, that's where I use the mirror silver paint. You've seen me use that to decorate bottles before. If you go down to the next um, level, in front there, you see some colored bottles. You see blue and a, a light green and a red. Those, again, are all alcohol ink. And then you see some bottles in the background, and they're all a combination of either alcohol ink, there were a bead that was colored that to begin with, or it's something that I painted with one color of a patina paint or maybe did a, a couple of colors, as in the green one in the background. Then the uh, glass, it, I actually just squirted some of the patina paint in there, um, and that's what's in the glass and let it dry. And then on top of the, in the center there, it's just some gold coins that I had. Now, if you look in the middle, you see there's a, a collage sheet. That's the, the sheet that goes with this project. So um, it's got a lot of the bits and bobs, and the digital set has everything in here, plus all those parts that we already talked about in putting the tent together. And I took some of the tarot cards and uh, backed them with some chipboard and then put them in the little cubbies there. And then, of course, you see the drawers with the um, little mini drawer handles that are so cute. And down below, you see a bunch of books. Uh, those books came from this collage sheet as well as some from the collage sheets and image sets that I used in the Apothecary project right before this. So if you watch that, um, you might recognize a few of the books from that. And I just filled everything with chipboard because you weren't going to open them and they were just going to be sitting in, in the cabinet. So that's basically how I put the hutch together. The only additional thing was the psychic sign at the top, and then um, that is a, a, uh, a charm piece from Alpha Stamps that it's got the, um, the metal with the eye in it, and I thought that would just make that sign pop a little more. And it looks really cool if you noticed when you've got the cabinet in the back behind the, behind the curtains and you've got that eye and that psychic standing out. I think it, it really makes that pop. Now for the table in the chair, I started with the uh, wood table that you see in the far right bottom. And then the digital kit, if you look above it, it has the uh, round top, which kind of has a leather look to it, paper, and you just glue that to the top. And then you see the panel that's the skirt. So I printed multiple panels and then glued them around the uh, edge of the table, and that gives you the skirt. So that gives you the coordinating colors that go with uh, the tent and everything else. And then I used a sweeper fringe that has that same kind of burgundy color, reddish color in it, and gold around the edge. And then on the top, there's uh, images from the collage sheet, the, the zodiac, more of the tarot cards, a couple of more books. Then there's a crow sitting on top of that behind are two candlesticks. They come that way. Then you see a couple of bottles. One's a bead with a moon, um, a moon charm on top of it. And the other little uh, turquoise bottle has got a couple of different turquoise and purple colors. Those is more of the patina paint. Then I've got a marble, glass marble, sitting on a bead cap for the crystal ball. Now the chair, um, it's got a red velvet on it, but the um, the frame of it was also red, so I painted it the same teal color as I painted the hutch. The trunk is just made from a blank wooden trunk. If you look at the top right, you see it comes with um, the latch on it. It's, it's very easy with the small screwdriver just to unscrew that, which is what I did. I uh, painted um, some of the trunk black, and then I used, it's a, it's a paper set, it's a really cute Halloween uh, six by six paper set that I used the outside stripe paper and then I used some of the pattern paper on the inside of the trunk. And then inside I put a, just a piece of um, uh, purple sparkly fabric, another one of the books. You see some sheet music in the back that came from the collage sheet from the apothecary before with uh, had a bunch of sheet music and books and and uh, paper and stuff like that. So I used that, a couple of flowers, little paper roses. 
And then at the bottom next to that, you see a little wicker basket. It was white. I painted it uh, gold. And then there's a bunch of little moons in there. I, I don't know if they're lucite. There's some kind of plastic. It's the same moon charm that I used on top of the one bottle. And a little sign from the claw sheet, moon charms. And then on the other side, you see a couple more of the books. And then you see this dome. And I've got another one of the bottles in there. And I just figured, well, maybe that one was something special and um valuable or something like that so it, it needed special treatment by being in the dome maybe it's love potion number nine and so you know it needs to be inside that and then if you look at the edge of the chest i've got a tambourine now the tambourine i used a bottle cap which i painted with a couple of cream colors then i cut a strip of brown paper and backed it with black um cardstock just to stiffen it a little bit and then I made slits in it so that I could stick the coins through the slits and glue them in place. And the very last slit you see on that little strip of paper in the picture at the bottom right, I put ribbon in that so that it would have some ribbon hanging out of that. And then I glued that whole thing around the, um, around the bottle cap to create the tambourine. Now on the outside leading up to the tent, I thought it'd be nice to have some things in there. And so on the right side, you see some pumpkins, you see the Madame Rue sign. That's on the collage sheet. What I did is I printed it twice. You wouldn't have to print it twice. You could just cut it out and trace it on another piece of, of paper or whatnot. Because I wanted to make like a sandwich board sign so it would sit up. And I connected the front and the back by just taking a piece of chipboard and folding it in half and gluing the front to one side and the back to the other side. And then it just stands up all on its own. And then I've got uh, one of the owls from the uh, Ghost Moor manor collage sheet set. Uh, I used that recently too. If you looked at my blog and saw the Edgar Allan Poe tomb project, I did. Uh, I used that on that as well. Then if you look at the right side, you see I've created this little tower of, of um, spinners and wheels. And um, to do that, the base of it is a little wood chess piece that you um, just comes in a little kit. And then to that, I attached a, um, a piece of, I don't think it was a wooden skewer. I think it was just a, a really skinny dowel. And then to that, I added a series of spinners. They're kind of popped up from each other to give more depth, or I'm sorry, wheels that are popped up to give a little bit more depth. Then to that, I put various spinners and then um, just a, run, a little tiny rondelle on top of that on some of them. And um, so that's pretty much that piece. And you can see the moon charms below. There's more pumpkins. You can kind of see in the corner of both of them, I've added the fortune teller sign, the potions and charms sign that are just sitting there. So just to kind of dress up the entrance of the tent. Now you see the completed tent, the whole view of it. And you can also see at the top, I added a filigree star with a moon on top of that. So I hope you've enjoyed it and have some ideas whether you want to do this whole project or you see components of it or just techniques that that you enjoyed uh, for a lot more pictures and more details the complete detailed supply list of course pretty much everything i used alpha steps is carrying uh, you'll want to hop over to my blog the link to my blog that will take you directly to this project is down in the description area uh, if you're on YouTube, if you're watching this from my blog, you're already there. So I hope you enjoy this. And I do have a few more Halloween projects coming for this season. I may not be able to create videos. I don't know if I have time. But if I don't, there will be detailed instructions on my blog for each of those projects. So um, I hope you have a great Halloween season. And I'll be back.